Ping has been measuring her level of joy on a scale from zero, no joy, to 100, maximum joy. She has found that her level of joy can be expressed as a sinusoidal function. Today, her joy measurement is at its lowest level, zero. The next time it will be at its maximum is 300 days from now. Part A is writing the sinusoidal function for her level of joy, T, days after today. So the first thing I'm going to do is write down the information that I was given. So it says today, which is zero days from today, her joy measurement is at its lowest level, zero. So one of the coordinates is zero, zero, and that is the minimum. The next time her joy measurement will be at its maximum, and it, we're given that the maximum is 100, is 300 days from now. So if x or t is 300 days from now, the coordinate is going to be 300, 100, and that is the max. So when you're asked to write the sinusoidal function, it's always a good idea to make the graph. So I've made the graph over here. I'm going to label joy, well, 0 is down here, and then 100 is up here. And then you also need to label the halfway point, which is 50. Um, and then days from today, I'm going to go by 100s. So 200, 400, 600, 800, and the last one is 1,000. So the, the points that I'm given are 0, 0, so I'm going to plot my point there, and 300, 100. So because I had to go 300, 1, 2, 300, to get from the minimum to the maximum, that same relationship holds true for going from maximum to minimum. So I'm going to go another 300, 1, 2, 3, and now I'm at the minimum again. Go another 300, 1, 2, 3, and now I'm at the maximum, and that, that would be at 900. And then I want to get some more points on the graph too, so now I'm going to go halfway between 300 and 0, which is 150. So at 150, it's also at the, it's also at the um, middle there, which is 50. So 150, 50. Um, and then I'm going to repeat that same process over here. So between 300 and 600, at 450, it's also going to be 50. Between 600 and 900, at 750, it's going to be 50. So then I'm going to connect the points to make the sinusoidal curve. And now I can identify A, B, C, and D for my equation. So A is the amplitude. That's how far are you going from like the middle of your graph or the mean to your max or the mean to your min. So you can think of it as that or that. Either, in either case, it's going to be 50. Amplitude is 50. B is the period. That's how long does it take to make one full cycle. So I'm going to go from my max to my max. That would be going from 300 to 900. So the period in this case is 600. Then I'm going to do the D value. D is the mean or the middle, which is 50 in this case. And then C is where it gets a little bit confusing. Um, you can do cosine C or you can do sine C. Now looking at the graphs of sine and cosine, sine starts at the origin and then goes up and down and up and down and up. Um, cosine starts at one. So it does not start at the origin. It starts at the max and then goes down and up and down and up. Um, so when you're picking your C or your phase shift, or that's like, where is your graph going to start? You have to be mindful if you're doing sine or cosine. If you want to pick a sine C value, you need to pick a value that's like starting at the middle. So that could be this value because that is starting at the middle and then going up. That could also be this value because it's starting at the middle or the mean and then going up. So if I'm right, if I'm doing sine C for sine, I always write down like whether I'm doing sine or cosine so I know which equation to use later. If I'm doing sine, that's going to be at 150. You could also make an equation with sine being at 750. There's, there are an infinite number of um, C values that you can pick because these graphs are periodic. They repeat. Um, so there's an infinite number of places where it's going to be at the middle and then going up. But I like to use the one closest to the origin. Um, alternatively, if you want to do one for cosine, if you want to do a cosine for C, the cosine starts at the maximum and goes down. So that point on this graph, well, that's here and it's here. So my cosine C value could either be 300, 
which is like the, the X value of this one, or it could be 900, this one. So there are two different equations. Well, there are actually infinite, an infinite number of equations that I could write, but there are two different types of equations, a sine or a cosine equation. So one of my equations, and keep in mind all equations go off of the, um, like the parent function, y equals a sine pi over two x, sorry, it should be a sine two pi over b x minus c plus d. And that sign can be sine or cosine. So if I'm talking about this specific situation, I'm going to plug in my a, b, c, and d. One of my possible equations is y equals 50 sine 2 pi over 600 x minus, and I'm going to use my sine c value, which is 150 minus 150 plus 50. That is one possible equation. Another possible equation is y equals 50 cosine 2 pi over 600 x minus and my cosine c value is 300 so it could be x minus 300 plus 50. Either one of these equations work you can solve the problem with either equation. Um, so what the problem actually is it said well part b it says over the next 1000 days how much of the time will her joy be above 70. So above 70 her level of joy being above 70, that's like the equation y equals 70. That's when y equals 70. So what I'm gonna do is plot that on the graph. I'm gonna plot the line y equals 70. So in order to find how much time it's above 70, I'm gonna need to find like this and this. Like what's the length of time when those are occurring? So I'm gonna need this point, I'm gonna need that point, that one, and then I, I know this one um, because it's gonna end at 1,000. It's only asking over the next 1,000 days. So to solve that, what I do is plug in 70 for y. I say 70 equals, and I'm just gonna use my sine equation for this one. You could hypothetically use the cosine and get the same answer. 70 equals 50 sine two pi over 600 x minus 150 plus 50. Now I'm gonna isolate this portion of the equation. So I'm gonna do 70 minus 50, getting rid of that 50 at the end, and then divided by 50 to get rid of that 50. So now I have 0.4 equals sine, and I'm gonna simplify two pi over 600 to pi over 300, x minus 150. Now, the way to cancel out sine or cosine is to do inverse of sine or cosine. So how I'm gonna how I'm gonna proceed from here? I'm gonna do inverse sine or sine negative one of 0.4 equals pi over 300 times x minus 150. So that's how I'm canceling out the sine. So there are going to be two solutions to this. There are two solutions to inverse sine of 0.4. Um, and you'll see why on the graph a little bit later, but to get the principal solution, the principal solution is the one that your calculator gives you. First check that your calculator is in radians. Yeah, um, first check that it's in radians and then just do inverse sine of 0.4. And you're gonna get that that is 0.411517. So that's, that's inverse sine of 0.4. And then I'm just gonna do that equals pi over 300 times x minus 50, 150, sorry. And now I'm literally just going to solve for x. So I'm gonna to have to multiply by 300 and I'm gonna to have to divide by pi and then plus 150. Oh, whoops, I did minus 150, sorry. So I'm gonna do that one more time, 0.411517. Okay, so then multiply that by 300 divide by pi, and then add 150. So I'm getting that x p, or the principal solution, is 189.287. Now, I'm gonna go look at my graph and see, does this make sense? Because the principal solution is gonna be that first one there. Is that x value about 189? And I would say, yeah, it's, it's right before 200. 
I think that one works. So this number right here, the 0 0.411, that was my principal angle or my principal theta. So we, we just found the solution where the line crosses for the first time. But the problem is that we also need to find that, we also need to find that point. Where does it cross for the second time? Your calculator is not gonna give you that. That's something that you have to go find. And that's what's called the symmetry solution. Now, to find the symmetry solution, if you are dealing with sine, the symmetry solution is going to be pi minus the principal solution. We have our principal solution. So then you just plug that in to find the symmetry solution. This holds true for every single equation that you're dealing with when you are dealing with sine. If your equation is dealing with cosine, if you picked this equation and you're now solving and you're now like plugging in 70 to y for that equation, then what you would have to do, there's a different formula for cosine symmetry solution and that is Symmetry solution equals 2 pi minus principal solution. So looking at this particular situation, I used sine here. So I'm going to use the symmetry solution for sine to find, or the principal solution formula for sine to find my symmetry solution. So my principal solution for sine was 0.411517. So if I'm, I'm going to bring it down here, the symmetry solution, which is what I'm trying to solve for, is equal to pi minus the principal solution, which is 0 0.411517. And then I just go into my calculator and I do pi minus 0 0.411517. That means that my symmetry solution is 2.73008. So that's my symmetry solution. That needs to be set equal to pi over 300 times x minus 150, just like we set the principal solution equal to that to actually solve for x. So now I'm gonna repeat that same process of like solving for x, but with my symmetry solution. So here's my symmetry solution on my calculator. I'm gonna multiply it by 300, divide it by pi, and add 150. And I'm getting that the, um, the symmetry solution is 410, 0.703. Now, I'm going to go back up to my graph, take a look. Well, that's like where this, this one falls, because I'm looking for that point right there. That looks to be at about 410. It doesn't have to be perfect because I didn't sketch my sine graph perfectly, but it's pretty close. So I know that I have now found my principal solution and my symmetry solution. But that is not actually what the problem is asking. It's asking over the next 1,000 days, how much of the time will her joy be above 70? So I know that one of the times her joy is above 70 is going to be from time 189.287 to time 410.703. And I'm going to find how, how much time is that. So I have 410. 0.703 minus 189.287 and that is 221.416. Great, so now I have found how much time that one is. Now I need to find how much time this one is. So in order to find this point right here, all that I'm going to do is add the B value or the period to whatever this one was because it's just moving ahead one cycle and the period is one cycle. So I'm gonna say, well, what was this one? This was my principal solution. My principal solution was 189.287. I'm going to add 600 because that's my period. I'm going to do 187, sorry, 189.287 plus one period. And I'm getting that that is 789.287. So that's this time. And then based on my graph, it looks like the like before, before you get to where it would intersect the line, it's going to be cut off at 1,000 because we're only looking at over the next 1,000 days. So it's going to be that time to time 1,000.
then I'm going to go over to my calculator and do 1000 minus that value to find how much time that actually was. So 1000 minus 789.287 and that is 210.713. Now I have found that area. So now I just have to add together these total times. So 210.713 plus 221.416, that is 432.129. And my unit here is days, so like days after today. So she will be, or I guess her joy will be above 70 for this many days between now and the next 1,000 days.